Welcome to ASAP Elite. Today's guest was drafted in 2008 by the Arizona Cardinals. After 11 Hall of Fame caliber seasons, he turned his efforts into providing a light to our most valuable resource, our children. Track and field long jump champion, <laughs> two-time All-American, three-time All-Conference, two-time NFL Pro Bowler, and soon to be HBCU Hall of Famer. I can go on for days. Yeah, real talk. But I have to paraphrase it because it was just too long. Too many accomplishments. <laughs> Lockdown. The proud of Lakewood Ranch High, Mr. Dominic Rogers Cromarty. What's going on? What's going on, man? Appreciate the family. Salute, salute, salute. It's hey, a look now. I ain't like you weren't. Uh, you know, what I'm saying being a being a. I'm a track guy myself. You know what I'm saying. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that track, man. That track will help me with football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, man. That's what. Um, I went to the University of Tulsa, and 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 uh, after when you know the cast was getting ready for the combines and stuff like that, they'd come and work out with our coach. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't like that track. Yeah, man, I get you ready. We interviewed uh, Rod Woodson and maybe four other corners. I must say, in my opinion, you are the best corner that I've interviewed so far. No, man, don't don't do me like that, man. <laughs> in my, hey, in my, in my, I watched. Hey, I'm out. I'm a receiver. Yeah. I saw things. You were so. You were. I, I compared you to Asante Samuels in a lot of ways. That's my favorite corner. Man, my he, and I got a chance to play with him though. When I was playing with him in, with the Eagles, man, I I never told him until until he left. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I'm in competition now. Now it's me and you, but that yeah. that's my I pattern my game after that. That uh, hey, I'm a fan of Asante. You hey hey, you can see it, and you know I didn't even have a chance to think about that. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? I can just tell the, the chances. You know uh, that you took the instinct. You know yeah. the calculated instincts. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was dope, man. I, I used to watch you, and know that that side was locked down. You know? have, okay, so so with that being said, I just have a question for you, yes, real, real quick, man. So, what do you think or about a lot of the corners you see today that don't seem to want to put their hands on the receivers? I think I think the game is is being being kind of watered down. I think a lot of corners don't want to get up there and be an aggressive because the, the pass interference is called so so much nowadays. It kind of takes your physicality away from you. But like I tell corners, they're going to have to call it on me. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen, can... the rule is five yards. Uh, in, in the five yards, I, I, I'm going to beat you up. if Because I'll see cats line up three yards off the receiver, and then they'll sit there and follow the receiver. I'm like, man, that's too hard. Hey, right. how many receivers can actually uh, – how many DBs can actually – uh, hold the jam. You get what I'm saying for that five yards. Two, two. That's because we got trapped the receiver, so it, it it's kind of hard to get up there and just put your hands on somebody. Yeah, that's what a free I mean, release. I've been I've been getting off jams since junior high school. You get what right. I'm saying? Uh, but a free release, bro. Even if I got to make you fight, it, I, I'm 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 affecting your route some. I, I think them kind of guys is the ones that know they can run. That's the only way you get free release. Yes, yeah, a few run with somebody. I mean, and in your case, you know, as a receiver, when I know I'm getting jammed, you know, when I'm getting press coverage, I'm automatically stemming the route. You know what I'm saying? So your aggression is going to push me into my stem anyway. You get what I'm saying? Yep. So you got to be, you got to get back in your zone. You can't play so aggressive anymore because these receivers are too good. My, make them earn it. That's all I'm saying. Make them earn it. Go ahead. Go ahead, D. I'm sorry, I just had to get that out, man. It's been bothering me for some hey, time. Now. Yeah, we about to hear I, it from like the guy. <laughs> they, they too crafty, man. That's why you got to go out there with, with the plan. See me, you you got to mix in the quick jam, the fake jam. You you can't get up there and line up and do the same thing and try to put your hands on them. Uh -oh. You gonna lose that. Yeah. Like you said, the receiver's too good. You you got the. It's kind of like a mind game, a mental game. You got to play that mind game with them. Yep, that's right. It's Tai Chi. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or it's, it's martial arts. There, you know, and uh, I got to the point, like I said, in college, I didn't even think about it, your hand fighting, the DB's hand fighting. You know what I'm saying? I just went where he went. You know, it was like uh, like shadow, shadow boxing or whatever. You know, uh, it was it turned into instinct. Yeah. You know, so 
Yeah, but like I said, it's not a lot of guys like DRC who can jam and then get back in the zone. You get what I'm saying? That's the uh, talent. That's the talent. Jamming, because anybody can jam and run with run, man. You get what I'm saying? But to right. jam and get back in your zone and not miss your landmarks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, that, yeah. I saw you do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bait, yeah, I, I, I'm a baiting kind of corner. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you got on my nerves a lot too with that sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I I'm like I said, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. <laughs> like now days, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Hey. Let's get into it, man. Hey, can you do us the honor of introducing yourself to our audience by explaining how you were introduced to football up until the time you decided it was time to hang up the cleats? Ah, uh, shoot. For those of y'all don't know me, my name is Dominique Rogers Cromartie. Brady's in Florida, Tennessee. Those have been living under the rock. Yeah. <laughs> I, the main thing that got me into football, man, was my mother. You know, uh, growing up, she made me and my sisters Pick pick a um pick an activity and stick with it, you know. And uh, my thing was football. I always played neighborhood football, throwing up, bust them up with my older cousins, you know, tag football. And uh, since since I was young, I always felt like I can excel at it because I was always running past people. I wasn't the biggest. I was always the smallest until I had a growth spurt in high school, mm -hmm. you know. But even then, I was the littlest guy on the team, but I always scored. They used to call me TD Rogers because the guy got tired of saying touchdown Rogers. Yeah. I like <laughs> 36 touchdowns in, in, as a little league guy in one season, man. Just running reverses and running away from people. And uh, all the way going to high school, I went to five different high schools. You know, uh, I moved my dad at the time. He was a college coach. He'd been a college coach for over 25 years. So my mama thought it was a good idea that, you know, I go learn. If I want to play sports, I go learn from one of the best. So when I moved to Orlando, it's a bigger city. I got there. I didn't even get on the field my first three years there. So I'm like, man, listen, man, they ain't giving me a chance up here. I went to a school where we went to state almost every year. So I'm like, I can't get on the field. So I went back home my uh, senior year, and I went back to Brady to where I went to Lakewood Ranch. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I uh, started DB and receiver. You know, I had some – I didn't have no scholarships because I was I was a guy that only played one year. I only got one year looked at. So coming out, my dad – like I said, he's been in the college coaching for over 20 years. His When he was coaching at Bethune-Cookman, my dad's a basketball coach. The football coach was my uncle at uh, Coach Reed. So he was at Tennessee State, defense coordinator. He was like, hey, man, I'm going to give you a chance. Come play for me. You know, I ain't have none. So I'm like, I'm going. I took a visit. Man, they took me to a basketball game. Uh, man, it, it, it was electrifying to me. You know <laughs> right. hey, all these, it's an HBCU. I'm talking about the gym was filled. They were playing a rival school that was from down the street. Tennessee State were playing Fish University. Man, it was, I, oh, y'all got me. I'm ready to sign. What? You know? <laughs> they had me from that day. So I went up there, signed. I went up there early, hanging with some of the seniors and sophomores and stuff, just following them around as, as, as uh, before school started in the summer. And uh, it clicked, right? It clicked. From my first day, I got in the seven on seven with them. The first day, I never forget. I jumped the out route and took it back, and then because they kept pick on me, but I kept jumping them, jumping routes and stuff. So they were like, "Hey, look, man, I right. so we get into we get into a camp, and you know, not everybody know me as Coach Reed nephew. So mm -hmm. I'm not one of your top recruits, so I don't get the number I want. That's why I went number forty five. Forty five is die hard for me. So I was wondering that. Yeah. Yeah. Get there. The the equipment manager digs in the uh, laundry basket and they throw people that ain't highly recruited a jersey. Mm -hmm. So he threw me mine. I opened them like 45. I threw it back. I'm like, no, nah, man, I think you got the wrong person because <laughs> I, I feel like I deserve a number. But yeah. he's like, no, nah, you ain't did nothing. Like, you ain't, you ain't. So I took that. That's like a tip on my shoulder. So in camp, my mindset was, I'm going to be so good, they're going to remember me. So. Mm -hmm. It got to a point in camp where the offensive coordinator was tallying how many picks I was going to get that year. I mean, get that day in yeah. camp. I, mean, I was picking them apart. So we get into the season. You know, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm the, I'm, it's only two freshmen that traveling, but I'm not playing. That first game, three corners go down. So they threw me in the game mm -hmm. and blew my red shirt on like the last series of the, of the, of the fourth quarter. They blew my red shirt. So the next game, 
we playing Jackson State. This one, uh, HBCU was on B, uh, BET. Mm -hmm. So back, we playing Jackson State. The first play, I never forget, Cletus Gordon played for the Tarzan. He came, he came I think he went fourth round receiver. Sure. He took me by 50 yards on the ball. Mm -hmm. Caught it. I tackled him. They set up, they, uh, we stopped him. You know what I'm saying? They, they put the ball off. I come back to the sideline, guys, like, man, I told y'all he wasn't ready, man. That's just a cool nephew, man. He ain't going to be stuck. I'm the only true freshman on the team. And we're 45. Right. Yeah, with the 45 on, so <laughs> you know, the first kind of day, I was nervous. So, yeah. man, come down to it. Now I'm getting in the rhythm. Now I'm, now I got a few pass breakers. I'm making tackles. Come down, it's, I never forget it. Seven seven. A minute left. They were driving. Man, I picked that thing off, ran it back for a touchdown, and won the game. I ain't looked back since. Man, Excuse, well, sorry. Man. What was y'all saying about coach's coach's nephew? Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> man, yeah, that's what I, I'm I'm yeah, I'm still amazed, bro. You know that that and that's an amazing story because you started off talking about you know like where where you were. There's a lot of kids that would have hung up the cleats at that point, right? They're not getting any shots, and then you know the thing is is that there there was there was this this dog that eventually just came out and started biting the mess out of folks that was always in you, and so you 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 believed in yourself enough. To say, you know what? I'm just gonna. Uh, what I'm gonna do is get somewhere where I know I, where I know I'm gonna get a chance to play. All right, I did. I, I'm not highly recruited because a lot of folks would have gave up even at that point. Yeah, right. And then, right. then when you get there, you know, you're not highly recruited. Of course, I, I, you know, as as a D1 athlete, you know, I, I could definitely say I know <laughs> what the folks that weren't highly recruited and happen to make the how, how that whole process goes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and. And then when you finally get in, you know, as a corner, as a corner, as a football player, you got to have a short memory. Yep. Yeah. Right. And you have that short memory. Matter of fact, you use everything that had built up against you, right, as motivation to be the man that you ended up being. And, and, and the thing is, is, and then once you got there. You ain't look back like you just said, and you just kept going and going and going. And the thing is, is that's the reason why you had the career. That's why you were a household name as a as a corner in the league. And let me, so let me, let me, oh, I'm sorry. that's that's what's up. Hey, yes, let me ask you that. What you told me that uh, what you what you said to us that you were doing in practice. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Blowing up offensive coordinators' game plans in practice. They yeah. can't practice. You get All what right. I'm saying? You got beat on 50, but you knew it was coming. Your whole yeah. team knew it was coming. You get what I'm saying? It's yeah. a whole different feeling. So you didn't get down. You just got nah. beat. You just got That's beat. True. You lost yeah. the round. Yep. But you knew that was coming because you were like, you know, you know what's up. You knew who you were. Everybody right. knew who you were to the point that now you mentioned Walter Payton, mm -hmm. Michael Strahan, Satellite, Jerry Rice, Tyrone Poole, DRC. You can't talk about HBCU uh, greatest without mentioning Dominic Rogers Cormarty. How that feel? Man, it's, it's an honor, man, because the guys you just named, you you already know they're legendary, man. And, you know, uh, you know their situation back then, you know, ha happened sometime to go to an HBCU, man. But... Right. For for to come out nowadays, man, and, and to go first round from an HBCU, man, that, I mean that's tough. That's uh -huh. tough, man. No, and and, and I work, I hear I work you. notice. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, man, like I say, uh, even going through that that whole draft process, man, they was trying to knock me. But like you say, for some reason, like when I talk to kids and motivate them, man, I always tell them, you got to turn that into something that works for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you letting it beat you down or trying to walk away from it. If you truly believe and want it and believe in yourself, man, the sky's the limit for you, man. Because I never forget they were saying I wasn't playing no competition. Uh, I'm too small. You know, I was born. I was born with one kidney. I got health issues, okay. so they were trying to knock everything against me for me not to go. But that's round they let me in the senior bowl. First one. That was <laughs> yeah. I went out there and got defensive MVP of the game. Then they mess around and let me in the combine. See, I always say, I'm just waiting on an opportunity. If you give me an opportunity, I'm going. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm gonna get everything you're looking for. Oh, but I got to keep fighting for that opportunity.
And even if you know, it, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nah, that's yeah. yeah no, well, because one of the things that I'm seeing, like, that's great. You got the opportunity. See, but there's something that become that comes before opportunity is preparation. Yep, right. Yeah. See, because now it, it's it's hard to keep yourself prepared and motivated to wait for that opportunity to come when you've dealt with all the things that you've dealt with. And you know what I'm saying? And everybody, it's almost like everybody's beating you and you're sitting here just, just shielding it off and, and you know, and diving and weaving. And, and now when it's time, if you see that opening, you take your shot. It helps to have world-class speed too. And it's a knockout. Yeah. <laughs> you that world-class speed. You know what I'm <laughs> and, and coverage skills. Yeah, you knew what was up. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? The, the world didn't. But hey, it took us like, Two years to catch up with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's DRC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Much love, dog. Hey, let's get into the meat of our interview. All right. Yes, sir. Most valuable resources are scarce in our inner cities. Mm -hmm. One is the ever so mentor. Many times, underprivileged mentees may be deprived of the kinds of information necessary for navigating and thriving through opportunity, opportunity situations. I'm sorry. How does mentors, how did mentors assist you in your success and getting to the point where you were? And you ain't gonna believe me, but I'm gonna tell you, that's something <laughs> I never, you, you know what I mean? That's why I'm so passionate about it. Cause if I had somebody to tell me, mm -hmm. With all the success I had, if I had somebody tell me I was going about it the wrong way, mm -hmm. I'd be a lot better off. I mean, don't get me wrong now, I'm, I'm, I'm good, like, I'm great. But what I mean is, my myth, certain spots in my career that I exploded, you know, I could have handled better, but I never had. Everybody always looked up to me, even as a freshman, as, a, as my rookie, like, people always gravitated towards me. And, and because I was having success, Nobody ever wanted to tell me, now, nah, Crow, this ain't the right way. Like, my rookie season, they could tell you. I'm pulling up to the game in dicky Fits and free Chico, like free my cousin shirts, all kind of stuff. I got a dunk on 28 with the drop top. I'm just, I got my brothers with me. They dreadhead. Like, I was going about a lot of things the wrong way. But nobody ever told me that this was a business. You know what I mean? I had to learn a lot of stuff on my own. And people always say, well, Man, that's just DRC, that's just DRC. No, mm -hmm. I need to come tell me, hey, bro, no, I need you to clean this or that, that. You know what I mean? I never had that. So, like I said, like you said, growing up, all that wasn't taught to me. Yeah. Turn that Only. trick daddy down. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Turn that yeah. trick daddy down. Let's slip slide down. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, all that stuff was new to me, and I, and I had to learn it on the fly. You know what I mean? That's why I try to get guys at a young age, man. That's why I want to target the youth, man. Because the one thing I know, man, if, if you deal with that mind early, man, I'm telling you, you can set yourself up for life because it start right here, then it come here. You get these Absolutely. together, man, it, it, I don't care what kind of hurdle they put in you, you be able to jump it. Because that, if you a man of belief, that's what the Bible tells us. Absolutely. And I always thought that's what kept me around so long is my foundation, my faith. You know, it, there's nothing you gonna tell me about me. I promise. I know who I am and whose I am. I always That's say right. that, and I truly believe in that wholeheartedly. I truly do. Definitely. Yeah, that, that's that's good stuff right there. And and you know, I, I, I totally admire the fact that that you saw the the obstacles that you had to face, and you said, you know what? I, if it's up to me, I'm not gonna let none of this next generation have to deal with the stuff that I had to deal with. You know, there's not enough of that going around. And, right. and that's the reason why, you know, people who look like us right. are, aren't doing as well as, as folks who don't look like us. Because right. we're not we're not going back and helping and pulling that person aside and saying, hey, you know, when you go to that business, that that uh, that that, that, that black owned business and and you don't get necessarily the service that you want and don't just walk away. You know, say something, It be, be there for them. You know, and 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 try to help them because the thing is, is they may just listen, just like you. You you didn't know. You just kind of went. You know, okay, I'm I'm just doing me, but I'm definitely would love to have the mentor. So I, I appreciate that that you definitely saying, you know what, I'm gonna make sure this don't happen again. As many as many youth as I can touch. That's dope. Yeah, 
you know what? He had to fall on that sword. That was his path. You get what I'm saying? So I can come to him and say, you know, uh, wisdom gained through experience that's going to be advantageous to those following. You right, get what I'm right. saying? That was just something that you had to do for our next generation also. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that if the ball was dropped, it's systemic, man. That was systemic. You know, that whole, our whole generation, you know, right. that was systemically impacted. So it wasn't a lot of us, a lot of our mentors, a lot of our fathers in the communities already. So we had to do what, it, do what we did. You know what I'm saying? We had to do what we, make it do what it do. So you had to go through that and become that father for the next generation. Now, you brought up the fact about mind state. Right. A, personal, a personal growth mind state involves embracing the idea that challenges are meant to be overcame. And every opportunity, positive or negative, presents a chance to grow. Right. How has mindset and personal development played a part in your life? Man, that, that is real big, man, because I was hit with, with so much mm -hmm. that if I was weak-minded, I'd have been gave up. I'd have been called a quiz. I, I agree with just a little bit that I've heard. <laughs> First diagnosed with, you know what I'm saying? When I had to, uh, every year I got to sign a waiver to play football because they know the liability. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have the doctor told me I was never supposed to play non, uh, contact sports. You know what I mean? But like I said, I was so grounded in, in just believing in myself. I was taught that first. Like, if nobody believes, you got to believe me. But I mean, like, truly believe in yourself wholeheartedly. That's why if I get beat, you not going, you ain't gonna shake me. I'm not going in the tank. Like that's my mentality. You're gonna have to beat me every time. Like you say, you line up there, you're gonna have to beat me every time. You ain't gonna never take my heart. I promise you, like I always tell God, you can only match my intensity. You will never outwork me. That that's what made me last so long. Like if the guys will tell you, if anybody that went to school with me, they'll tell you, I never lost a race. You couldn't even beat me to the water fountain. Like that's that's <laughs> Like, when I was in New York, that's guys that played on the practice squad receivers. I give you $500 if you catch a ball on me in practice. Mm. Like, like, I want one of them guys that be like, hey, hey, take it easy, man. You know we got a game that week, man. You ain't got to be – because you get some guys out there, scout team, they're trying to kill you. Yeah. That's what I want. I want you to try to – that's just how I went about it. Mm -hmm. So my mindset is always, man, I'm going to give you everything I got. That's the only thing. That's all I can give you. I give you everything I got. And, and man, that's I'm a mindset that needs to be taught. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, our guest last year, uh, Chuki Akobi, he preaches neuro linguistic programming, you know, which is the method of mindset and personal development through promoting skills such as self reflection, confidence, communication, and what benefits one who attains becoming efficient in these practices. Let's direct this conversation to the inner city. All right. Let's get, let, let, let's talk about Dominic Rogers Cromarty Foundation and tie it all in. All right. Where teens may lack resources and necessary building blocks for mindset development, which experts consider to be self-confidence, AKA self-esteem, what are ways mentors can initiate reprogramming all right. So with, with my with mine, you know, uh, the first thing we do is like we got a little thing I call Teen Center. Mm -hmm. You educate them on on their test scores, the stuff they need to get in college, you know, uh, and you send and I send them on trips. But my main thing is you got to get to know the individual for that individual. Everybody is not the same. So when I when I when I talk to a younger person. I start with their upbringing first. You know, I want to get to the root of it because, like you say, through experience, I have learned a lot. Just through experience and even from school and just even from the Bible. So I, I incorporate all that. But if you don't get to know that person first, it's, it's, it's hard to really work with them. Like, you can't – everybody's not the same. Everybody's not going to go off. The, the biggest thing we need in our inner city is, like you said, that word confidence. The reason why we don't have a lot of confidence because we – We'll call it joking or, or joining somebody. Mm -hmm. We kind of bring each other down by picking on the less fortunate. Now you, we can't do that. So you got to you got to make them feel comfortable, make them feel good about themselves all over again. It's just it's a compliment here and there. 
for something so small as, man, I seen you pick up that little piece of paper, man. I, I like that about you, man. That, that's good, man. Not everybody, you, you know what I mean? It's just certain words that you never know gonna bring light into them and, and now they'll catch wind of it. Now they start doing it, find themselves doing it more and more. Maybe it start off, they doing it for them to fish for a compliment, but mm -hmm. then it become now they just doing it without them even thinking about it. That's right. And by the target. That's what I was looking for. Now, people with a growth mindset, you know, believe that their basic qualities and abilities are things they can develop, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately. But also confidence and resilience, you know, in self, you know, in the face of adversity and criticism, you know, enter the flight or fight mechanism, yeah. you know, pretty much. Can you control the mindset development in these situations, especially where we come from, that flight or fight mechanism, you know, or, uh, that happens? If, yeah, that's, that's, it's kind of yeah and no. You, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it, take, it takes work because when you, when you hit with something, it's kind of like, ah, you resort, you resort back to it. But that's why they always tell you, take a breath and just think, yeah. you know what I mean? Are, are you a person... Are you gonna react to it, or are you gonna are you gonna take time and, and just reflect? Like I think uh, we, we we need to practice uh like breathing breathing um exercises and, and just take the time to. Cause boy, I'm telling you, if I would if I would have knew this okay. and learned early age, I'm telling you, like I'd be much better. Cause I was snapping on people, mm -hmm. you know. I play. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, if you know anybody that tell you. I'm surprised I lasted 11 years because my mom always said I was a walking time. I hold so much in that I just snap at any moment, but I never, and I, I was always a person, I was always small, I always react. Ah, ah, ah. You're a black man. We do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, so, and then also being smaller, and you, you don't know a whole lot about this cuz, but uh, you know, that, 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 that they call it little man syndrome. You know what I'm saying? And sure. <laughs> you know, hey, I, I, I got it. And, and you know, my cuz though, no you man. know, uh, growing up, you know, I ain't take nothing from nobody. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I felt like I had to, uh, um, you know, especially younger when I, you know, all the way, uh, I'd probably say up until middle school when I started being around my uncle a lot more and getting into church. But up until then, bro, you said something I ain't like, or I felt like he was challenging me. It was on. And yeah. and that's just kind of how it was. Y'all were super people though. He might've been little, but he was a super person. It's a difference. Yeah. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, you could probably whoop 95% of the people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and run away from everybody at the same right. time. Yeah, you jump over the fence, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So yeah, it's a, it's different, especially you know for athletes like you guys. Like I said, you know I was a uh, D two athlete. You know uh, I had to go a different route, you know uh, because I didn't take it serious at first, you know. So I had to take my lick. But you guys went like I say, even though it was HBCU, man, that's a that's major. You get what I'm saying? That's major. That's a that's cultural. You went to Tulsa, you know what I'm saying? And uh, End up teaching there, you know what I'm saying? That's that's amazing. So, but so to be that athlete, those All American athletes, you guys have to be something special, you know, everywhere. Like you well, are. And, and and I'm glad you brought up the HBCU thing again, because at one, I I am, I am so optimistic and just so grateful of where I'm seeing or the the trajectory I'm seeing of HBCUs. Right. Like like what the 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 like I think my son was telling me that the uh, the the number one prospect uh, decommitted to Florida State and now is going to Jackson State. I love what Deion Sanders is doing down at Jackson State. I love what Eddie George is doing there at uh, Tennessee State. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Grambling. The thing is, is when you look at these top tier programs mm -hmm. at these predominantly white colleges or colleges and universities, they um, th it's us. Right. right. And why was the HBCU created in the first place? Because we couldn't get in, in those schools. Right. Right. So, right. I mean, because I tell my son all the time who is now interested, like his his top school is actually his two top schools are Tennessee State and Jackson State. And so um, the thing is, is when you're looking at that whole situation, like some of those teams that Eddie Robinson had at Grammar would have dog walked. Yeah. The, the the number one teams in the country like be, right. because the thing is is that's where the talent was they it, it just wouldn't let that happen and so i i look forward to the day 
when the HBCU team, you know, the Jackson State, the Tennessee States, you know, the up the 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 Prairie View A and M's, you know, the schools as they continue to get more attention and they're in these hotbeds, right? Prairie View A and M is right outside of Houston. That's the hotbed. Country. All, yeah. of them. All of them. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, man I, you don't understand how excited I am about that, man. And 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 anytime, like my thing, let's get a Fab Five going to a HBCU. Pick a HBCU in, in the top five. Players in the country going to go there and wreck shop. Yeah, sure. you know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm just I'm just gonna put it out there. You know, that's how I do. Yeah, that's great thing. That's why uh, my foundation, my scholarships I give out, it's only to an HBCU. Right on, right on, right, right on. Hey, speaking of that scholarship again, man, because that's that's one of a kind. You know, your I mean, your uh, foundation it's one of a kind. You know, it's really impacting people, especially your objective, your. Uh, and, and, and how you guys attack, uh, you know, agendas. Dominic Rogers Cromartie Foundation. What is the significance of your organization? Man, it started, it started way before me. Uh, like I said, my dad was a basketball coach for 20 plus years. He's now the athletic director at the college in Lakeland. But uh, since I can remember, for 20 something years, he always came back and gave a free basketball camp to the city. You know, and I took over once I got in the league. So it's been going on for 20 plus years in our city. And uh, stuff. and uh, what made me really want to do it was, when I was young, mm -hmm. me and Peter Ward from the same place. And when I seen he bought back uh, um, Steve Smith, Lavernius Coles, all these guys, as a kid, bro, I was like, dang. <laughs> Yeah, I always wanted to do that. So that that all that played, and then my mama, she real passionate uh, just about people, you know. So when we came together with this idea, she was like, you know, uh, I want to give you, I want to give the people that something you never had, which is the resources. Like I, I never had that growing up. So that's why we be very passionate, and I ain't got to be on the big stage with it. You, you know what I mean? Like we've been going for. I'm not even playing, and we still going. This is my 15, 14th year, and man, we tremendous things. And and not only in this community, every community I've played in, Nashville, Arizona, everywhere I've been in, they they know me, and I'm still working in all those cities. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like we've been going for. I'm not even playing, and we still going. This is my 15, 14th year, and man, we tremendous things. And and not only in this community, every community I've played in. Nashville, Arizona, everywhere I've been in, they they know me, and I'm still working in all those cities. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and 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 I will say this because you know, and, and we, I said the same thing to Anthony Lynn uh, when we um, interviewed him. There are certain people that, because the thing is, is you're not looking at this to get a pat on the back, right? right? But there are certain people that have to be in the limelight because of what they're doing and how important it is. And honestly, you know, you you need to be on the big stage. We you need the, you need to be out there so that others can see what you're doing yep. and help you, but then also get their own things going because it's that that's the thing about it is it seems like the people who are um are best fit mm -hmm. to be in the limelight don't you know they oh, no, I don't want to be in the limelight. I want to do what I do and, and help as many people as I can. Well, Help people by helping those who aren't doing it right to see how it's done. Right. Oh, he said something then. Yeah. Right. Hey, man, yeah. before we get out of here, we like to close with asking our guests to leave our audience words of affirmation. You know, it's tough out here, man. It's tough for all of us. You know, we got to pull it through. That's what we do. You know, we overcome. So yes, the stage is yours. Man, if I could leave y'all with anything, man, is to truly believe in yourself wholeheartedly, no matter what. Understand that there's going to be obstacles, trials, and tribulations. But I always learn, during the midst of my storm, I'm always find joy. Because at the end of the day, somebody always got it worse, man. So I can tell you, man, if you believe, and I mean truly believe, go forever, whatever whatever you want to go for, man, it'll happen. And even if it don't happen, because you put so much work into it, something else going to happen that was going to be even greater than what you even wanted for. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'll test you that. That's what's happening to us also. You know, that work, yeah. the effort, the purpose. You get what I'm saying? Above everything. You know, is, uh, and it's, it, uh, you know, 
the Lord has blessed us. You know, yes, but, man, hey, thank you for coming in, brother. Hey, hey. man, I appreciate Great talk, man. Y'all, y'all boys. Hey, hey, I appreciate you, brother. This, this was an amazing interview, bro. I, I, everything you had to say, bro. I'm sitting here. I, my, my son finna watch this bad boy right here. <laughs> Hey man, I was starstruck the whole show. Y'all confused me, man. Like I said, that's my guy, bro. Next, <laughs> hey, next season it's gonna be a Rogers Crow Marty jersey on that wall. Hey, you, uh, it'd have been so much better. We could have got a star on that helmet, though. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just because you know our, uh, our 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 secondary was dog water for for some years, man. We could could have helped it out. Yeah, could have got a bag too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Man, yeah, man. Salute. Yeah. Hey, yes, sir. go blue. Hey, go blue. <laughs> yes, HBCU, man. Hey, man. man, that was amazing, man. That was everything. Oh, bro, bro, you, look, everything. Tell you, man, I, 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 like I said, man, why when he when he was in the league, uh, -huh. uh for large, he he played for teams I I I ain't, I ain't like. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I hate seeing that dude. I like, man. Come on, come on, man. Why we keep why we throw the ball at him? Go away from him. Right. <laughs> hey, he, he started in that Super Bowl. Yeah, bro. I, I, you don't understand. Like, bro, as a cowboy fan, yeah. Was, uh, can, can we, like my whole thing is go get somebody that, that keep doing us dirty. Go on, go on, get him. Why why everybody else getting him? Go yeah, on and throw that star on his helmet. Hand him these bags. You know, at that time, his cousin uh, Antonio Cromarty. Revis mm -hmm. was bouncing around, Buccaneers, Jets, Patriots. You get what I'm saying? Oh, no. And, and, and like I said, at the time, look, I wanted uh, – give me either one of the Comartis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Either one of them. And get both of them. You know what I'm saying? If we get both of them, you know, you get one, bring the other one with you. You know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, man, but look, what he's doing for the community, man, with the foundation, man, is just – remarkable bro it's big. Oh, that's, that's yeah, bigger bro. than anything that i've seen on the field bro like Definitely. like being able to give back to say you know what i don't that's what we all have to do we have to say i don't want the youth to make the mistakes that i make so i'm gonna do everything i can yep. to make sure that i i make a difference and that's how we make this world better that's how we uplift those who look like us yep. and, and it's not a lot of us that's in that position that take on the responsibility of our forefathers and what they created and keep the tradition going like he has. That's community. Absolutely. We got to uh, get community back to being, you know, being that village that, that makes us all strong. Yep. HBCU landscape is changing every day, every single day. And he's a liaison to it. You get what I'm saying? So absolutely. So we, to all the, 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 those that are out there that are really pushing that agenda, and and I don't mean just to to say that he's the only one doing it, but he is definitely it's, it's definitely changed since he came in the landscape. So Deion Sanders, yep. bro, I salute you, bro. I <laughs> salute everything that you're doing and and the and and the stage that you're putting HBCU uh, football on. Thank you. Yep. Hey, and not just the coaches that's coming in because I think uh, Hugh Hugh uh, got the job at Gremlin. Uh, mm -hmm. Two days ago, and you know he started getting okay, that's top dope. tier recruits. Yeah, top, top tier recruits. But it's it's not the coaches, it's the parents that's explaining agree. to their players to their children the significance of it, and they're listening. But yeah, they're, and, the and, HBCUs and, are starting to provide them. You get what I'm saying with the resources that they need to be seen, to be uh, you know have their talents on display, no matter what. You know, level whether whether they're on their own Power Five or HBCU. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and 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 Master P, I got to give a lot of lot a lot of credit to him and and what he's doing promoting HBCUs. You know what I'm saying? His son, one of the top recruits in the entire country, goes to t Tennessee State. Percy, you Percy, and Hershey. Hey, also, uh, watch uh, watch out uh, watch out football change. Watch out, watch out HBCU change. Be Absolutely. Game. This whole landscape, <laughs> I'm telling you, it, 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 take, like it ABA. takes moguls like Master P. It takes people like Deion Sanders. It, it's taking folks like Eddie George. It's taking folks like 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 um, Hugh Jackson to to really listen. Let's let's make this rush. Let's start putting our talent in the schools that, that, that uplift our people. Yep. The not, not to say that we have we hate no anybody else, but we do. We got it. We gotta love our people. Mm -hmm. Man, I went to the uh, Bayou Classic. Uh, maybe 10 years ago, and mm -hmm. I must say, it was probably the worst football game that I saw past the JV level. 
You get what I'm saying? It was so predictable and slow. And this was Grambling versus Southern. These are all, uh, you know, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lafayette kids. Mm-hmm. The play calls were so predictable. I watched a game this year. It was something like I never seen. I was there with my pen and pad, taking uh, taking concepts. Watch the SWAC championship. When I was in high school, I used to go to the uh, to to the um, well, it used to call, be called the Al Lipskin Classic. Then it became the State Fair Classic. But it was yeah. Grambling and Prairie View. I went to watch the halftime show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Because Prairie View dog walk, but they kill it on that 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 halftime show. But like, man, you don't understand how proud I was to see Prairie View in the SWAC championship. Like that was dope. That's I'm like, time. man, look at look at Prairie View, bruh. Too late. Ah. By the way, that's where your boy gonna go to get that doctorate too. Yeah, H- I'm, yeah, I'm definitely. I'm, I wish you best of luck with that. Only Sally one of them no more for me. Hey, right. <laughs> hey my money. That's my money. We were able to record this show again from our family's location, Wheaton Solutions. I mean, by far the best trainer in Arizona. Hey, I'll put him up up against anybody in the nation. Like I say, his two sons. All went to the league, you know, all Americans, Chandler High School. I mean, it, these are the ones that follow in the league, you know, the ones in the league. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Yeah. So he, he's doing his thing, man. On top of just being just grade A first class individuals. Amazing. Amazing. All of them. You know? So yeah, at, at the family facility. What's going on, big man? Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend right here, bro. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. What I see, y'all stock is growing through the roof, man. <laughs> Hey, but but the thing is, is it takes folks like yourself and 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 because you you believed in us early, you know what I'm saying? And so the the all all that we're doing right now is really on the backs of the folks who really believed in us before anybody knew about us. And we appreciate everything you guys have done. And I appreciate everything not only that you've done for us, but you've done for uh the, the 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 kids that grew up with your kids and the kids that are continuing to come up now you're doing some amazing things with them and and i salute you for it oh man i had to look back see who you was talking about for a minute there man <laughs> <laughs> it's a community man it's a community down here we got a village we got some good coaches some good teachers yeah. we just got some good people in the community man that's doing god's work mm-hmm. you know when you're doing god's work and you're traveling forward things are going to work for you when you go your own path that's when you fall off so you know I'm, I'm excited by some of the stuff that i see you guys doing and uh you know when y'all get ready to go public man i need to go ahead and buy some of that stock you know me and get money in real quick I'll throw you, I'll throw you. already man well hey like i said we and we're gonna take everybody with us that that that, that we can get on the on on the bus you know what i'm saying and 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 folks the the el the the what we call the uh the, the early adopters that, that's what we say in business the early adopters those are the ones who who really helped us to get to where we are. Yeah, y'all was gonna get there anyway, man. But you know, grinding is grinding. Y'all grinding, man. I it is. Y'all grinding. And that's what it's the weed way. People don't that's the weed way. People don't realize it. You know, it takes a grind. And if you ain't put that grind in, you ain't getting nothing out of it on the other end. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got here at eight in the morning, it's cold. <laughs> you know, to put it in. I love it. But that's that. even bigger than anything we got going on, you got the floor. Hey, you got to come down, man. Again, we got our sixth annual uh, Wheaton Sports Solutions golf tournament. Last year, we put up 100 golfers, man, with, without advertisement, without marketing. We did very well. So this year, we're trying to push 144, the max, to take over the whole golf course. And uh, I love it because we have a little bit of everybody. You know, doctors, lawyers, we got police officers, firemen. Everyone's giving a cause to what we're doing. And, you know, kids are going to college. Um, we're, we're giving kids some financial help when they go to college. We are doing some things for some schools. I think South is going to be in our, our our targets this year about doing something for them. You know, we've always loved Chandler and have, have, have always done some things for Chandler. But, you know, we're going to go back to the roots of where we came from, which is that South Block High School area. And uh, we want to we want to do some things for Do-Right. So this, this, this year we're trying to – to really, really, you know, rake the grass and bring everybody out, man, so that we can get um, a pretty good following this year, get up to that 144. From my understanding, you guys are going to be involved in that, go set up a booth there, interview some of the people that, you know, are going to be coming from out of state, you yep. know, meshing with us and 
It's going to be a big event. You know, it grows every year, and it grows because people, you know, are hearing about it, word of mouth, and it's traveling. We're going to be doing some big things this year. So, you know, we want that big banner for y'all sitting up there and uh, rocking with us if we can. Oh, oh, oh we there. We are. We there. Yeah, yeah it's going to be we, nice. We, we, was there, we was there six months ago. Hey, well, you got to come in early, man. If you come in early, we'll set you up at the venue where we at. Mm -hmm. We're going to be at the Arizona Grand uh, Resort and Spa again. Wonderful golf course, one of the best in the state. The weather's always nice. Um, last year was pretty cold, and it rained the day before, and it rained the day after. So that lets you know God wants this to happen because on that day it was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good to put yeah, him up. Like, yeah, he, yeah. He can't stay with me, man. He can't stay. He used to snore when we was little. I got you, bro. Too loud. We gotta... <laughs> I got you, man. Hey, we'll be delivering um, all the information, uh, you know, to the entire nation, to our entire audience, man, coming up about that golf tournament, man. Hey, if you guys can come out and support, if you can donate, do so. We appreciate you. Before we get out of here, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead, click that link. Yes, sir. Make sure you it? subscribe. Yeah, for sure. That's important. Definitely. Yeah, that's how we pay the bills here. Good seeing you again, big man. Oh, man, it's always a pleasure seeing you, brother. Looking Keep doing what you're doing. Looking fashionable. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the interview went well with your boy. Oh, it was excellent, man. It was excellent. Good. Yeah, somebody's going to grow from it. Good. Yep, Good. Yep, but... That's what it's about. All right, hey, y'all, until next week, we'll see you later. Oh, ASAP Elite. My man.